So it's time for you to be stationed at Fort Gordon and you're trying to decide if you should live on or off base. Well, today we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons about both to help you make a well-informed decision. That's coming up right now. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my channel. Welcome to Fort Gordon. This channel is all about helping you get to know what it's like to live in the CSRA in Augusta, Georgia area. My name is Kristen Helmus. I'm a licensed realtor here with Vander Morgan Realty. And today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of living on and off base, as this is one of the big decisions you're going to need to make when you're stationed here. So let's get started. First up, let's talk about on-base housing. Living on base can offer a unique experience for military families, and here are some of the pros. First is definitely convenience. So on-base housing is obviously just a short commute to work for the service member. This can also help save time in the mornings or the evenings. For example, if you wanna come home after PT or on lunch break, that's totally doable. You can get home quickly once you're off work at the end of the day. You're also close to the PX and the commissary if you like to do your shopping there. A lot of people like to go there to get their groceries because their meat prices are pretty good. And if your children go to school on post, then you can more easily do pickups and drop-offs, extracurricular activities. And there's also a hospital on base. So if you have any urgent health care needs, that's there. But keep in mind, it does not have a labor and delivery unit. Amenities are another pro of on-base housing. So Fort Gordon does have a really nice site around on base. It's big, it has plenty of shade, it's fenced in. And another fun thing for families and children is the outdoor pool, which has a spray park that has a toddler slide, a kiddie pool, a big slide, diving board, the covered patio, all kinds of things. And on base, there's also a large trail, which is good for horseback riders. You can take lessons. There's a golf course on post that sometimes does tournaments. And there's also quite a few events that are hosted by the MWR on post. So, for example, there is a firearm training, a fishing tournament, 5Ks, obstacle challenges, jeep meets, fishing derbies, and shooting days for kids. There are other events like fall festivals and Oktoberfests. And then they always do a big celebration for the 4th of July with fireworks and a concert. So... As you can see, living on post can definitely make it easier to participate in all of these fun events. Next is community. So on base, you're obviously surrounded by a lot of other military families, which can make it easier to connect with them when they understand what the military lifestyle is like. They might have a better understanding of what it's like when your spouse is away at training or deployment. Also, they might just have a better understanding of a lot of the frustrations that can come with military living. Next, let's quickly touch on security being a pro. So on-base housing obviously has increased security measures. You have to have an ID to get on, which can provide peace of mind for some. They do have their own law enforcement, so you might see the military police or the MPs driving around. Not to say that there isn't anything bad that happens on post, but this at least limits the amount of people that can get on and off the base. So cost. This can go both ways, but for now, we're going to talk about how it could be a pro of on-base living. Biggest reason being that rent prices have increased a ton, like a lot of areas, and if you have a family with several children or other family members living with you and you need a larger home, it's going to be extremely difficult to find this off-post within BAH. For example, a four-bed home in Grovetown can rent for $1,600 to $1,800, and you can see on this table that it's above most housing allowances for enlisted service members. Plus, you have the cost of all your utilities. So on-post housing can definitely be a good option if you want to make sure to keep costs at or below BAH. Also, living on post can save you the upfront costs like costs like security deposits, pet deposits, application fees, which can all add up. So number one is limited freedom. 
So living on base means you have to follow certain rules and regulations that might restrict the personalization of your home or your yard. So just like a lot of rentals, since you don't own the property, you're limited on what you can do. So if you wanted to add a fence, you're going to have to make sure it meets certain specifications, and you're going to have to come out of pocket for that even though you don't own the property. If you want to have friends or family come over and visit, even if they're just dropping something off quickly, they still have to stop at the visitor center before coming on base, and so that can sometimes be an inconvenience. And another restriction is that you can only have a maximum of two pets total. So if you have two dogs and one cat, you wouldn't be able to stay there. And they also have restrictions on the breeds of dogs that you can have. Okay. Next is availability. So on-base housing can be in high demand and the waiting list can be long and you have limited choices in terms of size and style. So many people have to wait several months before finding out if they've gotten on-base house and this can be stressful when you're trying to plan and prepare for your move. And typically, the larger the house you want, like the four and five bedrooms, those are going to have an even longer list. And the newer, nicer neighborhoods are also going to have a longer wait list. I've also heard people complain that dealing with the housing office in general can be a huge stress because they've been told different things about what homes they qualify for, just depending on the person that they talk to. Another important con to consider is quality. So I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard some of the stories and even lawsuits about the poor quality of on-coast housing. So many people have spoken out about how they or one of their family members have even gotten sick from being exposed to mold. So other people have shared photos of what are supposed to be move-in-ready homes, but they're filthy and they have bugs. So this is not every home or every neighborhood on post. But it's definitely something that needs to be at the top of your list to consider when you're offered an on-base house. It would even be worthwhile to request a record of the service or maintenance request so that you get a better idea of what condition the home really is in. Next, let's talk about schools. So if you live on base, you are in Richmond County School District. For elementary and middle school grades K-8, through there is Freedom Park on base, which is rated 6 out of 10 according to greatschools.org, which is a great resource. 6 out of 10 is average and comparable to some of the off-post schools as well, even some that are in Columbia County. However, what you won't find on post are the schools that are rated 8, 9, or even 10 out of 10, which you can find off-base. So Freedom Park also have limited athletic teams, so if your children are involved in sports, I'd recommend checking to see if they even offer that sport there. Now, for high school, Fort Gordon is zoned for the Academy of Richmond County, which is located about 20 minutes off base in Augusta. Unfortunately, ARC is only rated 2 out of 10, and there have been reports of frequent fighting and bullying by many people. Now, I have heard that you can fill out a waiver to attend a different school if you provide transportation for your child, and it has to be in Richmond County. So this kind of leads us into how cost can also be a con of on-base housing. So this is highly dependent on the neighborhood and the home that you get. So some of the neighborhoods have homes that rent for a flat rate amount. So this could potentially not use all of your BAH and leave some extra at the end of each month. But keep in mind that a lot of those houses are not the newest or the best quality. Now most homes automatically take your full BAH even when your BAH is raised, they will still take the full amount. So for example, you could be in a three bed, two and a half bath, 1500 square foot home in Lakeview neighborhood on post. And according to their website, you have to be at least an E7 to even qualify for this home. E7 BAH with dependents is about $1,900. So if you look at a three bed, two bath and grow the town for rent with similar square footage, you could find some for 1350 and 1450 Yes, you still have to pay your utilities and depending on what your landlord covers, but you may end up still paying less than or equal to BAH. So now, let's say you decide to buy instead of rent. Well, now you could potentially get a mortgage for even less than those rental payments, plus you're getting equity and creating an investment. And now, finally, let's talk about off-base living near Fort Gordon. So this option offers a different set of advantages and challenges. Let's check it out. 
freedom and customization. So living off base can give you more freedom in regards to having visitors. They obviously don't need to stop at the visitor center or get a visitor pass if you want to invite them over. So that can save them time and make it more convenient. And even for yourself, you can come and go from your house as you please without having to go through gate traffic and without having to scan your ID. If you decide to buy a home off base or even rent with a flexible landlord, then you have more freedom to customize your home and your yard. So if you want to paint or upgrade your countertops or put in a pool, landscape, you name it, then you're going to be able to do that. With a disclaimer, though, that if you have an HOA, make sure you check their guidelines. Next is variety. So even when inventory is lower, you still have a wider range of housing options to choose from, including apartments, townhouses, manufactured homes, single family homes. You can live in older homes, updated homes, new constructions, and you obviously have more locations to choose from. Some might want to live in Richmond County or Columbia County. Some people even love living across the river in South Carolina. And depending on the town you choose, you can live in an area that's closer to shopping, might have a little bit more congestion, or you can live in a more rural setting with more land. And the best part overall is that you have these choices when you're living off base. So living off base allows you to become a more a part of the local civilian community, connecting with people from various backgrounds. So even though some off-base neighborhoods are still predominantly military families, a lot of them aren't. So now you can have neighbors with all different kinds of experiences and perspectives, which can be a valuable thing. And a lot of service members also want that separation from work and home. So they're not constantly surrounded by only military families and only military buildings. And being more connected with and living in the local community is a great way to do that. Speaking of being connected, living off space can also put you closer to a lot of the local events and amenities. For example, there are markets, food truck Fridays, music, festivals, parks with splash pads, walking trails, kayaking, local restaurants, and shows at the Performing Arts Center. There are also places for things to do like axe throwing, DIY studios, the splatter place, a rage room, trampoline parks, bowling, theaters, mini golf, top golf, Dave and Busters, paint and sip. And that's not even all of the things to do here, but at least gives you an idea of the things that are off base. So we touched on schools earlier, but let's dig a little bit more into it. So let's look at some of the off base school options. Typically, most people are going to re recommend Columbia County School District. Their schools range from 5 to 10 out of 10, according to greatschools.org. So average to well above average. And in Richmond County, this often gets a bad rap, but it does actually have some good schools. So they have magnet schools that are rated at 9 out of 10 and a handful of other schools that are rated above a 5. In North Augusta, South Carolina, which is mostly Aiken County School District, they range from 5 to 7 out of 10. There are a few outliers that are out in areas like Edgefield and Belvedere. As you can see, there's the potential to be zoned for a high-rated school when you live off-base, and you should definitely keep that in mind when you're looking around the different areas for your next home. As with any choice, there are also some downsides, so let's explore some of the cons of off-base living. First is commute. Depending on where you live, your commute to Fort Gordon might be longer, leading to potential traffic and time management challenges. So, of course, a lot of times the spouse or the partner might be working off post, but let's just look at this from the perspective of the service member who's going to be going on base. So, the approximate commute times without gate traffic, which is very, very important, from Grove Town, 10 minutes, Evans and Augusta, 15 minutes, Hepzibah and North Augusta, about 20 minutes. That doesn't cover every town, but it does give you an idea of the, the common areas around here. Now, as I mentioned, that is without gate traffic. So what happens when the service member is trying to get on base at 6 o'clock in the morning for PT or at 8 a.m. when everyone is starting work? Well, you can add about 15, sometimes even 20 minutes to get through the gate. So many people have said that even though living in North Augusta, Graniteville, or other South Carolina towns is farther mileage-wise, it actually takes them about the same time to get on base during peak times because of this traffic. 
Yes, we are bringing up cost again because this can go so many different ways. As I mentioned earlier, it is possible to rent a home off base within or less than BAH. However, if you're looking for a larger home, like a four or five bedroom, then you're going to more than likely end up paying more than BAH, at least if you're renting, not necessarily if you're buying. Other expenses you should consider when you're off base are utilities and lawn care, and rentals are typically going to have upfront costs like application fees, security deposits, pet fees, so the upfront costs can be really high at times. So I think we should definitely address the crime rates off base. So let's take a peek at this map from crimegrade.org. This map is showing overall crime, so that includes violent crime, property crime, and other types of crime. Dark green is considered the safest, graded as an A+, yellow is a C, and red is an F. So generally speaking, you'll see more shades of green towards Grove Town, Appling, and Evans, but there are still yellow and red areas mixed in there. Other cities like Augusta, Harlem, and Hepzibah have more red areas, and you'll often hear people saying you should stay out of those areas because of crime. However, there are actually still green or lower crime areas there too, you just have to do your research. North Augusta is a little more split as far as green, yellow, and red. As you can see, there's a mix of all those colors off base, so it's extremely important that you check your resources like this for recent updated crime statistics when you're looking to buy or rent off base. It can also be helpful to search local Facebook groups for feedback from people who actually live in specific neighborhoods. So there you have it, the pros and cons of unbased housing versus off-base living near Fort Borden. So the right choice for you depends on your individual circumstances, your preferences, and your priorities. So you should consider factors like commute, your family needs, and the lifestyle you envision. Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all answer, and it's important to weigh these factors carefully before making your decision. I hope this video has helped clarify the options for you. And if you have any questions or experiences to share, please let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more valuable content about living in the Fort Gordon area. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.